Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today we are taking a look at Linux Mint 3.1. This is a Linux flashback, ladies and gentlemen. I found this yesterday on a website that has a bunch of old Linux ISO images up there. I'm going to put the link in the description. I figured you guys might like to see this. Linux Mint 3.1 was released in September of 2007. It was supported until October of 2008 and it was based on Ubuntu 7.04 and this would have been right around the time that I started playing around with Linux seriously so I do remember running Ubuntu 7.04 at the time and checking it out. Here is the GNOME Desktop Manager the Mint Edition, very nice looking indeed. You can choose a language here. You can choose things that you can do with your session. Choose a session. And you can also choose what you're going to do as far as like shutting the machine down or suspending it. And they have some other options here as well. So you could have more than one desktop loaded if you wanted to on Linux Mint. So let's go ahead and log in and get a gander at what it looks like. put in my super secure safe password and check this out that's right we have the same login sound today on the current version of Linux Mint which is 17.3 that <laughs> was on version 3 so not much has changed in nine years We'll take a look at the file manager. I have not changed the theme in this other than to make the fonts a little bit bigger so it's easier for both you and me to see. And this is Nautilus 2.18.1. Those of you who run the Linux Mint Mate version will note that it doesn't look all that different and that is because the Linux Mint uh, Mate version uses the Mate desktop, which is a fork of GNOME 2, and not much has changed looks wise over the years. They don't put anything in your favorites by default, you had to do that yourself. Take a look at the software that's available here. Under accessories, uh, we get uh, a calculator, we get a character map, a dictionary, disk usage analyzer, that is a package known as Baobab and that's still available in Linux Mint. Also we have a screenshot, we can uh, open the terminal, we've got a text editor that would be gedit and this is version 2.18.1 good old gedit. My mouse goes a little bit crazy in this virtual machine this is a 32-bit version of Linux Mint. It's running with one gigabyte of memory and two processors. And it's pretty zippy. Let's see here. Under graphics, we get GIMP. That's version 2.2. It doesn't look too terribly different now than it did then. We get a Firefox web browser to get on the internet with. We can poke around with this and play with it a little bit. And this is version 2.0.0.6. And believe it or not, I was playing around with this and it will play a YouTube video. So let's go ahead and log in and I'll show you that. The page doesn't quite render right but I'm not getting a warning that the browser is unsupported so I can scroll down here and I will click on a random video and hopefully this will not get me bounced off of uh, YouTube or get a strike on this video and it, you, and it actually you. plays if you're not caught up with Game of Thrones plug your ears right now mute your television and then when I do this you can unmute so you can uh, not do too terribly much here. I can pause the video and I can play the video but I can't seem to full screen the video so I don't have that functionality. So believe it or not it's playing a YouTube video on this really really old version of uh, 
Firefox. And mouse is going a little crazy again, gang. Hang on a second. I'll get control of it here in a second. There we go. And the Linux Mint page looks pretty much the same today as it did then. Just see if I can open something else up on the page. Ah, it wants me to log in with Google. That actually works. That's amazing. Okay, um, I'm not going to do that, of course, but kind of cool to see that it does work. And up here it is set with a default search for Wikipedia. So if I do a search for Linux Mint, it's going to give me a bunch of garbage here. Get off of there. It opens up the Wikipedia page, which seems to work fine in Firefox 2. Let's see what searches we have available here. We have got Google, we've got Yahoo, we've got Amazon, uh, Creative Commons, eBay, ESPN. We've got Expedia. So there's a look at Firefox. I can't believe it actually works. I kind of poked around. I even got it to log into Facebook. I'm not going to do it in the video, but I got it to log into my Facebook page, and I didn't get a warning that said that the browser was out of date. So that's actually a little scary, folks, because it should be telling me that I'm using an old browser. So we get Thunderbird Mail, XChat. We go to Office. What do we get here? In Office, it's Open Office, the entire suite. And by the way, this entire distribution fit on a CD. So the actual image is like 600 and something megabytes. Because on a CD, the most that you can, you can get on a data CD is 700. And that looks very familiar because I was running Open Office back then. LibreOffice, which is what comes with Linux Mint today, is a fork of Open Office. So we've got OpenOffice version 2.2. Under sound and video, Amarok is the music player. And um, I'm going to open that up. taken a little while to do that so here it comes <laughs> and it opened minimized so let's go ahead and make that full screen and that's what it looked like Amarok is an application that is in the KDE desktop environment you can still get it today Yeah, I guess. Okay. Don't show me the message again. Let's see what else we have in here. We also have Movie Player, which is now called Videos. That is a GNOME application. And that is still in Linux Mint. We also have M Player. Remember that application from years ago. And then we have the Serpentine Audio CD Creator. Looks kind of like Bracero looks today. And then you got a CD Ripper. Which is looks like a Sunder. I have no idea what file formats that would actually put your CDs into. I'm sure that you could create MP3s if you downloaded Lame. We have sound recorded there, a sound recorder there. And let's see. Look under system tools, not much. We've got the barrel manager and the barrel settings manager. And then we've got Envy and an NTFS configuration tool, which I'm assuming would allow you to write to NTFS external drives. 
That, of course, is now completely automatic, and you don't have to configure anything. And then we have the preferences. If we go to install software, it opens up Synaptic Package Manager. That has not changed in the last 10 years. It pretty much looks the same today. So let's look for a package. Of course, the repositories are out of date and nothing is here, but it will still find it because when the system was installed, the local repositories were already in here. So let's see, there's my package. Right click if I want to install it. It's not going to do it, but we'll, we'll give it a shot and turn it loose and see what happens. Looks pretty much the same. And then it takes off and it says, nope, it ain't going to do it. And we'll go ahead and quit. And get the mouse back working again. There we go. Let's open up the control center and take a look around in there. Lots of tweaks. And this doesn't look much different today either in the Mate desktop. Pretty much all the same stuff. Except now the like the fonts and the backgrounds and the desktop stuff is all rolled into one app. So if we look here at look and feel. First of all, let's look at our background, see what we have available. A lot to choose from. Many of these backgrounds are still available today if you go to the retro in Linux Mint 17.3. Then we can adjust the fonts. That I have already done. That has not changed at all to change the font size. Uh, like globally, go to detail and then you can choose that. So that's exactly the same as it's always been. Screensaver. This was a real problem. I remember playing around with Ubuntu at this time and this screensaver application would crash your machine. That probably had a lot to do with the fact that I didn't have the proper uh, video card at the time. I had a machine that had internal graphics and great big old Asus monster machine that I had built for me but I didn't get a dedicated video card so it was a while before I could run Linux and get a lot of use out of it. So let's look at the themes and we have some older Linux Mint themes here. Bianca, Human, that was the Ubuntu theme uh, at the time. And they've definitely changed that up a little bit. Got some hardware things here. Change sound. Mint Desktop allows you to choose the icons that you see on your desktop. That's now in that's now rolled into the Mate desktop. Very complete system back then, that was for sure. So let's open up a terminal and look at some of the guts of the system real quick before we wrap up this video. And yes, you still get the fortunes today if you turn them on in the Linux Mint Mate version. I think you can have them also in the Cinnamon version, but I'm not really sure how you turn the fortunes on. That's something that they've done for a long time. Then they did it kind of like it looked like Calce, but I think it was Tux the Penguin. So for a long time, Linux Mint had that set up by default. Our fortune for today, for courage mounteth with occasion. William Shakespeare. Okay. See what kernel we're running. So 2.6.20.2.15 generic. So this is from April of 2007. That was kind of an old kernel even then. See if this was released in September. And let's see what else can we look at here. I want to see what file system they used for the 
drives. EXT3. Lots of options on there too. That's pretty cool. In this machine, I have one gigabyte of memory set aside. See how much memory it's actually using. Let's see if it'll use the human, humanly readable. No, it's not going to do that. We'll just have to interpret here. Uh, the used, well, it looks like it's using uh, 575 something around that megabytes. Let's see if top will tell us about memory in more useful terms. Yeah, about somewhere around 570 megabytes of memory is being used. Of course we have opened a bunch of applications here. Hmm. Pretty cool. Let's try one more thing. I want to see something about the drives and see if this actually works. So it would be sudo list the blocks here. So that's ls blk password. Nope, that command is not available. Let's try this, sudo apt get, and then we are going to update the system. It's trying, but it's throwing a bunch of errors. <laughs> yeah, I would expect nothing less. Let's go to upgrade. It's going to want to try. Let's see what it does. No. Let's see. Force it. Uh-uh. Can't get nothing. So there you go, gang. It's a, it's a look at Linux Mint 3.1, nine years old from September of 2007. And uh, I thought you guys would like to see that. So if we quit hit if we hit quit here, we get this lovely screen that allows us to do all kinds of stuff. We can lock the screen and see what that looks like. Yeah. Let's see here. Let's do that again, and you can watch the system shut down. It's got a nice little sound as you exit the system. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Do check out freedompenguin.com. Check out Easy Linux on the web and check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you would, give it a like. Of course, what you're going to be seeing there is all about current Linux. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy that. Thanks for watching, gang. We'll do it again soon.